President Obama's theology, the theology of President Obama's Christian theocracy. Part 8, Black Liberation Theology's Great Satan. We're continuing to examine the theology of President Obama. And I believe you are beginning to understand that force that is driving this man's political, social, and cultural policies. It is a blend of theology and philosophy. Theology in that it is somewhere within the pale of the umbrella of, quote, Christianity, at least in its terminology. But hidden in the heart of it is a Marxist ideology. And thus, when the president said change, he meant change America to the mainstream European-styled Marxist socialism, not change back to historical America, because it is totally antithetical to what the president believes is the right form of government to liberate the oppressed to liberate the poor, to liberate those who have been marginalized through the historic governance and economic structure of a free market economy in America. Well, let's continue with our analysis. In the New Testament, Jesus, as viewed from Luke's Gospel, comes into the world to destroy the works of Satan. If the preceding identification of the struggle of Jesus and that of African Americans seeking liberation is true, then there must also be a Satan in the contemporary picture. But it only makes sense if the struggle with Jesus is to deal with Satan. And if the liberationists are identifying themselves with Jesus' theology, there must be then a Satan in contemporary society. Black theology does not get bogged down in the quaint personifications of Satan, but sees him at work in the powers and principalities of this world that enslave and demean human beings. And the most demonic of these powers in the black experience is that of the white race and their empowerments that dominate the cultural, economic, social, political, and religious landscape. James Cone writes, and I quote, Theologically, Malcolm X was not far wrong when he called the white man the devil. The white structure of this American society, personified in every racist, must be at least part of what the New Testament meant by demonic forces. Ironically, the man who enslaves another enslaves himself. To be free to do what I will in relation to another is to be in bondage to the law of least resistance. This is the bondage of racism. Racism is that bondage in which whites are free to beat, rape, or kill blacks. About 30 years ago, it was acceptable to lynch a black man by hanging him from a tree. But today, whites destroy him by crowding him into a ghetto and letting filth and despair put the final touches on death." James Cohn wrote these words in 1968, and while they might be dated, they still convey a very powerful truth to the black community. From this perspective, you can see how that the black community viewed what happened to Rodney King at the hands of Los Angeles police. Or even more contemporary would be the Trevon Martin case in Florida, where the state has refused to arrest the shooter, the Latin American man by the name of Zimmerman. This continues to happen to black men with disturbing frequency, they argue. The jails and the prisons are filling up and are currently filled with black men. As a matter of fact, one-third of all black men are now under the jurisdiction of the courts or prison systems in America. And according to black liberation theologians and black power groups, one of the principal reasons for this are that drug laws were designed to punish with mandatory prison terms those who use rock cocaine. 
That's the principal form of cocaine used in the black community because it's relatively inexpensive. While penalties for possessing the powder form of cocaine, the form used by wealthy whites, are largely financial penalties and do not require one to serve any jail or prison time. Why would a society design a criminal justice system with such disparity impact? Cone and many blacks would lay the blame at the feet of the demonic force of subversive white racism. White racism, the white social injustice, that political form of white racism, the economic form of white racism, the social form of white racism, the ethical form of white racism, the religious form of white racism. That's the Satan that black liberation theology must oppose, must conquer in order to be freed from its oppressor, to be liberated, to be let go from their change of captivity. But how does that come about? It has to come through change. That's their hope, change. But how do you make change real? It's one thing to preach about a hope. It's one thing to talk about a theology. It's another thing to do it, to live it to put it into action, to engage it into your society. And black liberation theology has found the leader, their engager, to right the injustices of a white satanic society. And that's the change you're witnessing currently going on in America. That's the change of President Obama.